what you're thinking. You're thinking, now there's a woman who has it rough. Well, you're right. There I was in New York City, minding my own business, which is to say, an occupation not so much outside the law as just a little ahead of it. And suddenly this cop busts me, makes me go undercover as the girlfriend of the most dangerous gangster on the East Coast. Don't worry, he says, nobody will ever find out you're working for the cops. Now this criminal makes killing me his life's work. So the cops send me to Palm Springs to give me a new identity. And then if that isn't bad enough, they assign the jerk cop who got me into this mess in the first place to be my permanent bodyguard. To pull off this perfect cover, we have to pretend to be man and wife. You get the picture? To stay alive, I'm being forced to live in a mansion with a gorgeous hump, drive drop-dead cars, and wear designer clothes. And let me tell you, I do not intend to put up with it a moment longer than I have to. We'll have some fun. starting to wear well on me. No street noise, no street views, no street crimes. No streets. <laughs> Come on, I'm, I'm really Mississippi. Miss all the people. The steam coming off the manholes at night. Buggings in the park at night. Hot dogs, hot pretzels, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Street gangs stripping down parked cars. <gasps> Pretty nostalgic <laughs> stuff. <laughs> you can't be gunshot. Sure as hell can be. Well, now you can feel right at home. All right, get out. This could be a drug deal going down or something. I don't want you getting caught in the middle. Here, call Derny. Tell him what I got going. Tell him to send it a backup. Better include an ambulance. Cody, you sure what you got is what you got? I'm the cop. Make the call. Cody Powell. Backup order to be here any minute. Do you recognize this man that's been shooting at you, ma'am? Who, him? Now you mention it, he does look familiar. For God's sake, Holly, tell him! He won't even let me talk! something to do with another rerun. Hey! Hey, wait, what's that? Hey, what gives here? It says in the pink pages that I'm supposed to save the lady. No, Nick. I think I'm supposed to save her. Me being a stunt double all. Don't worry, Sir Paco. You're back up in the ambulance to be along just as soon as they can load up their assault rifle. <laughs> How'd you like to be in my film, cowboy? I like your style. You're Holly Barnett, aren't you? 
Live and appearing in a sand dune near you. Well, you know, I got all your CDs. I, I saw Down Home Mama seven times. I don't believe it! Uh, well, apparently I made a mistake here. Uh, Danny, call Durning and just tell him to call up the emergency, okay? I hope someone's called the police. Holly, baby, how are you? Groovy. If no one's hurt, let's get back to work. Not this, kid. One disaster a day on this company is enough for me. I'm going home. See ya. Ollie! My company is known for the precautions we take to protect our talent. The only disaster on this set was caused by him. <laughs> there wasn't and isn't any possible danger to you. What? Bloody hell! Motion picture, huh? As it turns out, is that Holly Barnett may really be in danger. She's been receiving threatening letters. The animation here is that uh, Nashville Sweetheart's about to have her $30 million insured head handed to her on a plate. And that's why we've been hired, to see that that doesn't happen. And Cody, she uh, specifically asked for you. She did? <sighs> okay, so Cody protects her from all external demons. Who protects her from Cody? Hey, I'm a professional. You're a man. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? Well, it means that you have all the wrong equipment to be guarding someone around the clock as gorgeous as Holly. I, on the other hand, as a person who has a lot in common with her, fit right in. Oh, really? Oh, I gotta hear this. What in the hell do you have in common with Holly Barnett? I, just like Holly, happen to be a great actress. Academy Award. We've got to do something about their girls' inferiority complex. Mr. Justice, you may remember us from yesterday. How could I forget you? This is my new singing partner, Amy Diller. Amy, say hi. Hi. How you do? We've been hired to investigate the possible attempt on Holly's life. <sighs> All right. I'm gonna go over this thing one more time for you two. That movie company had three identical cobras. Number one, that was for looks. Number two, that was set up with special shocks to make it run across the desert. Number three, it was rigged with dynamite so it'd blow up. But they gave me the wrong one. Seems like an honest mistake to me, doesn't it to you? Yeah, a mistake that uh, almost killed your old singing partner. You know, by no one's standard is my partner old. I might more successful, maybe. But Holly tries to throw an occasional job my way. And when you call feeding off the scraps of her table, wouldn't you call that a good motive for murder? You know, I could come up with uh, a better case for blowing myself up instead of her. Yeah, well, we're sorry to have to pry into your life, Mr. Justice. It's our job. Yeah, I know all about dirty jobs, but fortunately for me, this one's over. It's over? Well, she found her a new stunt man to be her flunky. So I'm fired. We're very sorry. I'm not. Say bye, Amy. Bye. When this movie's in the can, I've got a new one for Holly, scheduled to shoot in France. Josh thinks he's gonna get their big heartthrob Claude Giroux to star opposite of me. Shushu Giroux? <laughs> you better get yourself some healthy dogs. He chased me all over the Riviera. Still lift his wallet? <laughs> if you must know, he was trying to make me his latest protege. I didn't know you were an actress. Oh, yes. Uh, I made quite a living flying my craft across Europe. Excuse me, uh, there is a man at the desk who insists on speaking with Miss Barnett. Oh, well, uh, Cody, as you get paid for this. All right. Well, hail it. Hmm. Our hero. You two certainly have an interesting relationship. You noticed. I don't want any trouble, but I ain't moving until I speak to my wife. I'll take care of it. Thanks. Well, where's Holly? Well, she's enjoying her dinner right now. She doesn't want to be disturbed. Well, she can be disturbed by me, uh, Mr. Barnett. Mr. Barnett? Mm -hmm. Her husband? I'm her ex-husband. Look, I'm just here to talk to her about my alimony check. Because if you just get out of my... Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey. So you're late with one check. Obviously, she doesn't care about it, or she would talk to you. 
Why don't you just count your blessings, son? Get out of here. I'm not late for one check. She's late paying me. I don't have to explain a damn thing to you, so why don't you just get out of my way? Before I spank you like a little bit. Hey, 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 hey. Look, I don't want to have to do this to hard. <laughs> That guy looks like he just stepped out of road warrior. <laughs> that would be Luke, my ex-husband. I used to think you should choose a man by the size of his Stetson. <laughs> Sounds like you both might have ex-husbands before the night's out. <gasps> You're not concerned that Cody might get hurt? Of course, I find that thought devastating. And he's more nutmeg. <gasps> oh, don't worry about Cody. He's an ex-street cop. He can take care of himself. Considering that I have an early call for you, Mr. Canali, I was thinking that it might be best if I'm not here when all this ends. You're probably right. Now, Danny, promise me you'll take us straight back to the hotel. Scout's on. Night. Of course, there's straight, and then there's straight. I just gave my word. Well, I didn't. Golden gloves and a black belt. And up against me, you're just <laughs> another smart guy. Cody, are you all right? Oh, no. Where did it go? Where did what go? The human rock slide. Don't you worry about him. He left as soon as he saw the girls had gone. You let him get out of here on their own? Oh. Uh, you need a doctor, man. Oh, no, there's no time. Where'd they go? No, they said they were going straight back to the hotel. Oh, great. Two of them on the loose to make Thelma and Louise look like Mormon missionaries. If they fall down to my eyes, I take up the heat breath, but it's only in vain. Nothing's changed you with that. I tell you, I feel so bad about the way he got fired. It'll really mean the world to him that we stop by. You know, as long as we're just in and out. I start every day the same. No one will even know we were here. Thank you very much. We have a nice round of applause for Matt's partner. Ollie, why don't you come on up? I think they'd rather hear you than me. Baby, I'm really sorry about that job. I swear to God, I'm gonna make it up to you. This one's for Harlan, the one real man in my life. I will always love him. What do you mean by that? I have no idea, Amy. Stop by to pick up a check. Shut up. And quick as ever, aren't you? Can I get you a drink? Oh, no. She's up there dedicating that song to you, uh, the one real man in her life. That is what you call a bigger speech. You and all the other guys mean a lot to her, Luke. Well, not as much as you, Cal. Boy. 
hard. Don't mess with this guy. Oh, hell. Somebody stop them. I need to go powder my nose. Here, let me help. No, no I'm okay. I'm fine. I said, I'm really. Let me help. After all, I am responsible for you taking this terrible beating. You do have a way of attracting trouble, don't you? I don't look for trouble, Cody. It's just that when you're on the road all year, you find yourself surrounded by a lot of strangers. <sighs> Most of them with their hands uh, out. Did that hurt? I'm it's sorry. Okay, let me do it. No, it's just hard to believe that uh, a big star like Holly Barnett would have problems like uh, like the rest of us. I don't have any real friends, Cody. No one I can really trust or lean on. Hey, I know what it's like to be lonely. I spent a lot of my life being alone, too. You know what I mean? But on the other hand, you know, uh, I'm not lonely right now because I have this, uh, this beautiful wife in the other room. Do you love her, Cody? What kind of question is that? It's an honest one. So how about an honest answer? Well, Danny and I have sort of a modern type of marriage, you know. I'm not so sure it's modern enough to uh, include you. Cody! What? I came out of the bathroom after powdering my nose. This guy grabbed me, threw me down on the bed. He had a gun to my head to keep me quiet, and then he went out this window. Go see if he's still there. He's probably still there. Is he still there? No, he's not here. What, what, did you see him? Well, I didn't see who he was. He was all in black. He had a black hood over his head. This guy's right underneath our noses. Yeah, well, he left this note on the bed. Your country act is riding high, but even pretty girls must die. the loser. Yeah, I don't want to see him either. Hey, remember that letter I gave you last time? Yeah. How'd you do on it? I got another one for you. Looks like it was printed on the same machine. Here, let me show you what I've got. This is a photo of the offending correspondence printed on a standard daisy wheel printer. Potential assassin is living in the dark ages. Hasn't yet graduated to a laser. Is that good? Yeah. See? This particular daisy wheel has a tiny chip in the O. Find the wheel, and I can match it to the letter. You think Luke Burnett's the one who's been writing the letters? No. I don't think Luke could write his initials. I think he just wanted his alimony check. I think, uh, ought to go after somebody else. 
Well, I gotta go. I'm escorting Holly to the set. Uh, sorry. Go, don't be late. Cody, I may have something for you. Holly's given us complete access to her personal records. She still has Harlan Justice listed as the beneficiary of one of her life insurance policies for guess how much? One million smackers. Damn, I thought I had a rough night. What milk truck you run into? So, tell me about the million dollar insurance policy. Well, unless you're selling one, I don't know what you're talking about. Holly dies, you become an instant millionaire. <laughs> Who you been talking to? Her lawyer. Why would she leave you a million dollars? Well, Amy, I guess just for old times' sake. So you're telling me that you don't know anything about this insurance policy? A million bucks is the, the kind of thing that tends to stick in your mind. All right, Cody. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I, I gotta ask you, is, uh, is all this stuff really necessary? I mean, uh... hey, I need you on the set, Cody, without making people jumpy. So nobody knows. No, nobody knows. But if they did, they might walk off and ruin the picture. I mean, you're here to protect these people, and that cost you me right in the thick of things. Yeah, but do I need all these pads? And... <laughs> Just an extra margin of safety for you. Places. Coming through. All right, Cody. I want you to take your place over there, sit, wait for your cue, and then jump over the table. Good luck. Thank you. Vast improvement. You look lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Ryan empties his clip into Gomez. Blood spurts everywhere. Yet Gomez keeps coming, holding his flesh-spattered machete in one hand and the remnants of Glinda's head in the other? Ah, this is gross. I thought Josh said this was a sensitive character-oriented piece. Where are the love scenes? That was the love scene. I know it's garbage. All Josh's films are. Hey, you. Uh, come here. Talking to me? Yeah, uh, over here. So you're our, uh, guardian angel, hmm? Josh Canelli told me all about you. Oh, well, he did, huh? Hmm. Nice secret. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Sam Keller, writer. Uh, the writer. Can we talk? Sure. Look, I, I feel... Real sorry about Holly. I mean, she's got an army of people to feed. Business managers, ex-lovers, ex-husbands, mm. tabloid writers. And not to forget the uh, great American public. And the greatest dependent of them all, uh, me. How's that? Yeah, I've written her last three pictures. I guess she's dependent on you. <laughs> Look, son, you, you, you don't know about movies, hmm? No, I don't. See, uh, I'm a writer. Sometime after breakfast and uh, before lethargy. These pages went from Hemingway to hell. Uh, make a note. The soldiers must be written out of the ending to reflect the fact that the check to the costume company bounced. That's, uh, uh, voice activated. Comes in handy for inspirations and rewrites. <laughs> Mostly rewrites. Well, you know, I ought to get back here. I'm sure uh, we... Look, Cody, uh, my advice is protect Holly. But watch yourself and that beautiful wife of yours. Ciao. Ciao. This next film I'm working on in Paris is supposed to be a pistol. I bet I can get you a part in it. That would be nice, all right, but... We both have reasons we can't just do what we want to. Danny, when I look at you, I see myself trapped by all these kind of things. It's a part of our life we just got to change, girl. What do you say? I say we'll talk about it. Well, we're going to start by running some lines. I want to find out what kind of actress you really are. 
Okay. I'll do all my lines. You play my dash from boyfriend. Maybe I moved too fast. Did I surprise you? Maybe I surprised myself. I've kept these feelings buried for a very long time. But now it's like raising a blind in a darkened room. The light hurts, but I can see clearly for the first time. Kiss me again. We can't let anyone find out about this. No one. But when you leave this godforsaken place, I'm going with you. I love you. We're ready for you in makeup, Holly. Hey, how you doing? Uh, all righty. Well, my handsome hero, since things didn't work out between you and I, I hope you don't mind if I run off with your wife. Run away. Danny. Uh, Danny. Uh, we got to talk. About what? About, uh, about you and Holly. I mean, you, you left the... He left the window open, for God's sake. Oh. Oh, the window. Yes, well, it must have come as quite a shock to you, huh? <sighs> you can understand now how I could resist your overwhelming sexual presence. Oh, Cody, you don't know how hard it's been living a secret life. I hope you won't let my... Preferences affect our relationship in a negative way. Oh, Cody. My passion for Holly consumes me, and yet... And yet... I know it's a love that will one day destroy oh, both of us. <laughs> it's called reading lines, Einstein. This will be picture. Remember to keep it quiet, people. First positions. Ready? Here we go. Now don't touch the ball until I give you a cue, okay, Linda? Hey, nice to see you. Stay put. All the blank ammo belts are still in the box. Then what the hell are they using in that chopper? no danger. The uh, assistant didn't know there was a second box of blank ammo already up in the chopper. They were all blank cartridges, sir. Well, look, hey, if I made a mistake, I apologize. Uh, I mean, I was just reacting to what I thought was a life and death situation. Sir, we have some big problems on the set right now. Well, if you excuse us, please, we have to set up for the next shot. Mr. Canelli, I got something to say here. In my opinion, Cody was absolutely right. Sometimes it's better to act quickly, even if you're wrong, than to hesitate and let something terrible happen. I'm afraid I can't accept that, Mr. Durning. At some point, an amateur on the set is a bigger danger than some mythical murderer.
The squid has been tampered with. Look at this. There's enough powder added here to... To do what? To kill anyone on the set from Holly to... To Cody? who's been sending those insidious threats to Holly. Why? What are you up to? What are you... Now, look, there's nothing we can't work out. They got no leads, huh? All the physical evidence points towards suicide, but let me tell you, I talked to this guy in the movie set, he didn't seem like the self-destructive type to me. No one saw anybody entering or leaving this room? No witnesses. Even with a gunshot. Hey. Maybe there is a witness. Hey, where do you think you're going? Can't stay home on the films last night in Palm Springs. Since when? Since Mr. Canale decided to move the company for some new ending. Isn't that kind of odd? Very. Are you coming with? No. I promised Cody I would make sure you stay put. Danny, I thought we were going to start living our lives for us. Oh. How could you be a worse influence on me than I am on you? What are you doing here? What are you doing at my desk? You're, you're the one. You're the one who's been sending those insidious threats to Holly. Well, lucky you didn't notice things voice activated. Huh? You would have never left it behind. So now we got ourselves a real killer. It's not a publicity stunt or a mistake. And it's not somebody's dark joke. Yeah, whoever did this got caught using Keller's word processor. Then it had to be somebody who knew Keller's schedule well enough that they expected him to be someplace else at that time. Yeah. And he may have to move quicker now. He may not be able to plan his moves out as carefully as he did before. Holly. Holly. Next to the register. Oh, there's only one man who could have tracked me down here. Excuse me. Promise me you won't move and you won't go sing another duet. I promise. And uh, I've also got a note for you, Miss Barnett. What is it, Cody? Where's Holly? Well, she's right here with me and she's perfectly safe. She would be safe with you if you were in a coma. <laughs> I want you to get her out of there. There's been a murder. Who? Keller. Looks like he must have walked in and whoever's using his word processor to print up those threatening notes. <sighs> Cody, things are turning very dark. No, no, this is turning very deadly. Holly could be next. I want you to put her in a car. I want you to get her over to PSI right away. Okay, Cody, things have changed. I'll... Cody, she's gone. What? 
Hey, baby. Oh, Luke, God, you scared me. Sorry. I got your note, and I'm real sorry, baby. But I think it's for the best that you're leaving forever. I uh, know. Uh, I didn't say I was leaving forever. I said th this was goodbye forever. You're the one leaving. Shh, 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 shh. What are you doing? Get your hands Holly! Shh. Holly, where are you? Oh, darling. Holly, where are you? Just before she disappeared, Holly told me the company was broke. And that Canale is going to skip town because he can't pay his bills. And it'll never get financed again unless he can... Yeah, unless something happens to Holly and he can collect the film's insurance. <laughs> Not just something. She has to die, Cody, so the picture can't be completed. Because the finished picture would reveal to Canale's backers that he squandered all their money. Wait a minute. Are you saying to me that Josh Canale's willing to kill Holly just to save his failing career? Oh, I am sure of it. Hey. Let's not forget the millions that he's going to pocket, even if he never makes another movie. But even if you two are right, we can't prove that Josh Canale had anything to do with Holly's disappearance. Well, if we can't prove that, forget it. She's as good as dead. Unless we can find a reason to persuade Canale that Holly is worth more to him alive than she is dead. Well, considering how much money he's in the hole already, how would you propose that we do that? Oh, I think I have a way. Danny. Are you suggesting another one of your elaborate cons? To save Holly's life? What do you think? You produce. My company distributes. You get 50% of the domestic net and 30% of the foreign gross. Scripts at your discretion, as long as they contain plenty of gratuitous sex and violence. <laughs> Is there any other kind? Your uh, list of credits is very extensive, Mr. Ambrose, but uh, I've never seen any of these films. No need to apologize. Mostly distributed through Asia. Middle East, Far East, Pakistan. <laughs> We're very big in Sri Lanka. There's a million there. My Asian backers deal only in cash. I shall be the co-executive producer, both on Crossfire and the other two movies. No problem. Only one stipulation. And what's that? Both of those movies must star Holly Barnett. <laughs> Hold on. She's hardly anything special. She is something of a goddess in the Orient. My backers insist on seeing her today. Holly isn't working today, but I could probably set up a meeting for tomorrow. Oh, no. We're taking 747 out of LAX back to London tonight. The deal must be done now or not at all. All right. I'll arrange for Holly to meet with your friends. They will meet her at 4 o'clock this afternoon in the room of her hotel. Uh, is that possible? Yeah. Why not? Thank you so much. Goodbye, Josh. Yeah, this is Josh. Change of plans. Don't kill her yet. I'll be there in 20 minutes. We'll deal with her then. Hurry up, he's coming.
plan's perfect. Josh left right after Uncle Ray talked to him. He's driving all the way out here. That means Holly's still alive. Right? Right. Why are you doing this? I want to have a career of my own. And Josh says he can help me with that. Over my dead body. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, but it's got to begin someplace, don't they? Now, when this guy stops, you make sure you stay in the truck. Josh, what's up? Thank God I found you, Holly. updates all over the country. And he did mention something to me about going on the road with him. Fortuna would never find me. What you mean is I would never find you, right? Come on, you gotta be pulling my leg. I mean, you hardly even talk to the guy. You and Harlan, huh? Hmm. That's, uh, that's a picture. <laughs> Maybe I'll go up there and sing to you. You wouldn't. I would. 